Welcome to My Off-Grid Adventures. I'm Frank, and it is another beautiful day in Michigan. It's mid-January of 2024, and I'm still reflecting on last year, trying to learn from the things that I did, the things that I bought, and trying to not repeat the same mistakes this year. I've published a few videos of lists already. Uh, the first three were about things that I purchased for my RV last year. But this list is about the off-grid property, apart from just the use of our RV on it. So today I'm going to share with you a list of things that I regret buying specifically for our off-grid property in Michigan in 2023. I regret buying one of the security cameras that I have on our property, and it's one that was made by Keen. The reason that I regret this is just because of the small solar panel that it has. It's just not big enough to power it. Maybe in some really sunny places like San Diego, California or Hawaii, it would always work well. But in Michigan, there's just not enough sunshine to power this, even during the summer and spring and, and fall months, certainly not in the winter. So it doesn't really work. Uh, I thought about getting a bigger solar panel, but to buy that, you might as well get another security camera that comes with a larger solar panel. So I don't really know exactly the use case for this, but I wish it would have been disclosed that there's just not enough power that can come through that solar panel to keep this operational. So thankfully I have many other security cameras that do work well. I liked the app feature of this Keen one. Uh, I liked the quality of the camera and everything about it except for that small solar panel. So that's, that's why that's on my list. Hands down, the thing that I regret purchasing the most in 2023 can be represented by this box, though it represents much more than just this particular drive cap. It represents the entire project, which includes probably over 50 feet of galvanized pipe, a hand pump, one of those iron, red iron hand pumps for water, the drive point, and days and days of swinging a sledgehammer driving that pipe into the ground quarter inch by quarter inch until we hit water. Well, <laughs> it no longer works. The, uh, the couplings came apart, even though I tightened it as tight as I possibly could with all my strength. And that was just because of the pounding. I don't think anything can stand up to the kind of pounding that I put on this. Well, I shouldn't say me. A number of people helped, and it was just sad, so, so, so sad <laughs> that it was all in vain. So I'm going to have to come up with a different solution this spring, and I think it's going to be using that Ryobi earth auger that I purchased. I used it, and it worked really well, and I'll just have to rig up a system where I can put lengths of galvanized pipe on that till I get down to 25 feet. But uh, that project was exhausting and probably the most discouraging project. It was the most discouraging project that I've worked on since purchasing this property over a year and a half ago now. I'm not at all blaming the videos that I watched about how to drill a well this way. Uh, I really enjoyed all that I learned from Dave Whipple and Bush Radical's videos. I'll put a link to it in the description. It was good to see him show the mistakes that he made. And I wish that I could have recorded this project so you could learn from my mistakes as well. But uh, they also had some things that I didn't have access to, like that particular weight that they used on a pulley to drop. And I think that was the main thing. They never did it with a sledgehammer, and that was just not a realistic option. Another item that I really wish would have worked out, but I regret buying in 2023 is a telescoping stool that can be used by mechanics or just anyone that wants to have a portable way to carry a stool around. It had a high rating of like 400 pounds or so, but I think that that was based on it being on level ground. And when I used it in my garage or in other places where I've got cement or a deck underneath me, it works well, but when it's out on uneven dirt and ground, it doesn't support 300 pounds. I can tell you from experience, it cracked and broke hard and I fell hard to the ground. Wouldn't you love it if I had a video of that? That would be cool to share. I'm not gonna reenact it either to try to give you some entertainment. Just to tell you that even though some big guys on YouTube recommend this, uh, it probably would work great for you if you use it on a solid surface all the time. But be careful about using it off grid in the woods or even on the dirt anywhere. I wouldn't trust my body over one of those ever again.
I regret buying tough grid paracord with any thought of using it in any functional capacity at all. And I highly recommend if you need some type of cord to tie anything off, don't use tough grid paracord. It's terrible. I imagine all paracord is bad for most uses. If you were to keep it intact for its full length, maybe it would have a use, but if you need to cut it for sections to use, it just frazzles apart, it just comes apart and is useless. Just a giant ball of mess that really is too expensive for what you get. So I don't know what it's made for, but off-grid living, the snow just went down my pants. Uh, for off-grid living, I don't recommend getting paracord. Get, spend a little more or just get the right stuff. There's probably better stuff that's cheaper than that, and I know that now. But that's just not good rope to use to tie anything off anywhere, in my opinion. Frog Togs Wading Boots. I saw these on Amazon. They had good reviews. I bought them, and I wanted to love them. I actually did love them for the first half hour that I wore them and maybe even a little longer as I wore them wading in our river. Uh, it was better than my feet being directly in contact with sharp things in the river that could hurt me. But once I took those frog togs off, I had some of the worst blisters that I've ever had on my feet. So uh, maybe there's a way you're supposed to wear those that would help you avoid that. But for me, I don't know if I'll ever put those on again. I regret buying waders. Uh, I think neoprene waders might be fine, but these loose waders, they just aren't safe to use, especially, or definitely in a river, because if you ever were to trip and go underwater and the water were to pour in the top of those, you'd, you'd be in worse shape than if you didn't have the waders on at all. I bought a couple of these thinking it'd be a great way to access our river more times of the year than is comfortable. And uh, after using them a little bit, I just found out it's it's really unsafe. We'd, nobody got hurt, but it's a lesson learned. Uh, pay attention to the potential dangers out there when you're in a river and uh, either just get used to get going out without any kind of uh, protection, wear neoprene, which doesn't fill in the same way as these types of waders do. So we just threw these out. We kept them too long to return them and didn't want to cause any trouble to anybody else who might take them if we donated them somewhere but I, I don't recommend any type of waiter that operates like that. Most of the things that I buy are from Costco or Amazon, and I found some chairs at Costco that I thought were a great price. I think they call them director's chairs. They are folding chairs that are cloth, and they have a side table that comes out, has a place to put a iPad, a phone, a cup, and uh, quite a nice table space for things that you might want around the fire, like some marshmallows. Or I bought a bunch of those chairs, and I wasn't quite thinking right. They're a good chair for portability when you need something that can slip in your trunk. Uh, but I had thought about using these just in different places around the off-grid property where we gather. So a couple of different fire pits, a place by the river. So I bought up a bunch of them, and I really regret buying them. And the reason why is that that fabric that the chairs are made of doesn't dry quickly. So unless it's a super hot, windy day, if there's any dampness in the morning, it's going to stay. If you leave them outside, it's going to stay damp throughout the rest of that day. And it, certainly if there's any light rain or snowfall, those chairs are useless and they are for a long time. They just, especially in the winter, they're just never going to dry to where you can sit on it without getting soaked. They just aren't made for this. They are good for throwing in your trunk and taking to a picnic or fireworks display or something like that, but they're not made for ongoing regular outdoor use. This video is supposed to be about things I regret buying in 2023, but I just want to take a second and show you what I'm sitting on now that I just purchased uh, and was actually mocked a little bit by the staff saying, why are you buying lawn furniture in this weather? Uh, but I got them because we are outside no matter what the weather's like. We love it. Uh, somebody once told me there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad gear. I don't know if that's a slogan for REI or something. I don't know if it's original to the guy that mentioned it to me, but um, I think that's true to a degree. If you wear the right clothes, you can stay comfortable in just about any type of weather and enjoy the outdoors. That's why every video that I do, I start by saying it's a beautiful day in Michigan because regardless of the temperature and the overcast clouds, it can be a beautiful day to be outdoors. 
So anyway, that's why I was buying these chairs. And so far, I really like them. I'll show it to you and uh, let me explain why these are better than the ones I bought from Costco, at least for my use. All right, these are called the Big Easy. They hold 350 pounds. There are a few things I like about this, including the lumbar support that you get from this angle here. The height of the back is really nice and supportive. I definitely need to have support for my head because of a neck injury that I have. Because of these slots in the plastic, it should be something that just a towel or a terry cloth can be used to get this dry and you can sit on it no matter how much rain has fallen and you can get it to where you can sit in it pretty quickly, unlike the cloth, which just isn't ever gonna dry up for you. And then there's one more thing that's interesting about these, and that's it has a little compartment to put a coffee mug, a cell phone, and even a, it says for glasses in that spot. And then there's a hook here too for keys, it says. They also stack, which for a chair this big, uh, I was shocked that they'll stack. But they do, and they're light, just a few pounds each, under 10 pounds, I believe. You can find this at Ace Hardware and Do It Best and True Value, but uh, in this color, I had to hunt to find them. But I, I really like them, so we bought six to have them around the fire. And we also bought these tables that we're going to use in between each set of two so that we can have a place to set all those things I mentioned earlier. If you enjoyed this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? That really helps my channel. And subscribe for more off-grid videos, videos about RV life, and product reviews such as this. Thank you for watching.